You guys, I am personally so excited to talk to Keely because I see Keely in a group setting all the time. And I've seen her progress like as a part of like, you know, I don't ever get to talk to her one on one, basically. <laughs> so I'm so excited to talk to you, Keely, because you have just I mean, to say that you've made progress is such an understatement. So <laughs> I'm so curious to hear your whole entire story and everything. We'll just wait a couple more seconds to get people okay. on here. Um, hello from Seattle. Hi, Tammy. Hey, hey, y'all. A Facebook user says, <laughs> is that Marie? <laughs> How are you guys doing? I don't, it's five o'clock here. So, I, but, oh, but it's late. It's earlier in the rest of the country. So um, <laughs> I'm a little loopy from talking all day long. Anka says, hi, Keely. Hello. <laughs> All right. Well, let's dive in. This is the amazing Keely, and Keely can share her whole history with Clutter with you guys. But basically, Keely, how long have we been working together now? Um, so I started in a boot camp. It's been a little over a year ago. Um, and I did, I think I did two boot camps before I finally jumped in to CBA. Um, I knew I loved it right from the very first time um, when I saw the um, advertisement in Facebook, I was like, oh, yeah, that looks like something that would be good for me. It was it was good timing. And usually kind of around the beginning of the year, I get inspired to do something um, <laughs> like most people. Um, <laughs> first, we're like rearing to go. <laughs> right. Exactly. So it was good timing. And um, and then I was getting excited about it because it was coming up. And I said something to my mom about it, too. And she was like, well, I would, I'll would, i do that too. So I kind of automatically had a built-in clutter buddy right off the get-go. So that was nice too, you know, and I had somebody to kind of do it with. But um, I started making connections right away. So, uh, yeah, and I was hooked, like immediately hooked on the program because like the men's game, like that works super well for me, um, especially in the beginning because I just had, you know, you talk about like the, low hanging fruit. And, uh, I had a lot of that. <laughs> so it was just really easy to go through and like pick up my hundred and some items or however many we, maybe it's more than that. 300 items. I don't know. Um, <laughs> But I got a lot out. <laughs> like, um, I think it's almost, it's like 450 items if you do one okay. month. It's a lot. Okay. It adds yeah. up. And, and right off the get-go, just the whole stopping the flow in, like immediately, like I don't want to even necessarily say how much I started saving, but I'm going to. I just, if if my mom is watching, if you could plug your ears. Um, <laughs> I, I started saving just from not buying things about, 300 to 350 dollars a week of just stuff like it I wasn't even unusual though I feel like that's like a fairly common thing yeah and 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 you know we talk again about like you know how how easy it is to get things now and um for myself just kind of my history in general I think it's kind of the perfect storm for for me like it had all kind of come together into this horrible perfect store <laughs> um, <laughs> um me just um well because it was so easy to get stuff and i had um i had been divorced for a while i've been divorced for a while but um you know i was kind of trying to feel like i was in control of my life i guess but i was doing it in the wrong way um so when i was married like there was a lot of you know asking permission to buy things or maybe hiding things that I was bringing in or um, just feeling like I really didn't have any control in the relationship in general. And um, that, that became a part of it where I felt like, well, I am, I'm taking care of all the bills. I'm the one that's working. The only one that's working now because I'm divorced now and it's just me. Um, I can, I can do this. I can do what I want to do. I can buy whatever I want to buy. Um, not that I had like all this money to spend, so it didn't even have anything to do with whether I had the resources, <laughs> but I had this mindset that, you know what, if I want it, I can get it. 
and I can take care of myself. And that's how I thought that I was taking care of myself when really I was sabotaging myself left and right. Um, bringing in. And I mean, that's like, there's so many examples of that in everyday life that we all participate in, like whether it's buying lots of stuff and then having to like debt or like stuff to deal with, or, you know, you feel like, uh, like miserable. So you eat ice cream and like, that makes you just like, makes you feel worse. Right. There's like so yeah. many we do that we're like taking care of ourselves, or like we think we are, but it's so the opposite. Yeah. And, and then I had, you know, I had some other relationships that kind of failed kind of right after, um, after my marriage, then I had, you know, another one that failed. And, and then I started, um, I started thinking about myself, um, in a not, in kind of a negative way, I guess. Um, and so then I think I started, like, started realizing that I had accumulated a lot of things. And, and I wanted to know if, and this wasn't like something that I was super aware of that I was doing it, but I was almost testing people, I think, in my life. So I was like, if you can accept that my house is a disaster, and I also have some um, weight issues too. And I, I think in a way I was testing to see, are you going to stay? Are you going to continue to be a part of my life? If I, if I um, bring you into my life and you can handle my clutter and, you know, all of this other stuff that comes with, with who I was considering to be Keely, which isn't who I am now, <laughs> by the way. Um, but I was, you know, I considered, I considered myself this person that has a ton of stuff and my house is messy. I considered myself, um, <laughs> I don't know, just less than, than who I am. And, um, and I didn't, I didn't realize it. So it, so it all just kind of, um, and then also, well, I deal with, um, back issues. I was just telling, telling you just how I just got, uh, an x-ray and stuff today and I have to have an MRI and we're going to try to deal with some of my back pain issues. Um, so right out the gates with boot camp, I was really, I was very excited and motivated, like, and, you know, we know motivation comes and goes. So, <laughs> um, I was very motivated in the beginning. Um, and, and I wanted to do more than what my body would let me do. Um, and so as I'm getting into this process, um, and learning about how to declutter, my body wasn't cooperating. And so there's, you know, a lot of emotions and things that, that come with that too. So um, I realized I needed more than just the boot camps. Um, I wasn't sure about, uh, I wasn't sure about doing it because, it you know, it's an investment. Uh, and really what I noticed about myself too is I wasn't investing in things that were helpful to me. I was just investing in junk that I was getting off of Amazon. Like my money was going to junk, really. Um, fun junk. <laughs> you know, you feel good in the moment, junk. <laughs> um, but you know, it wasn't it wasn't really an investment in myself where I could have been putting that money towards really worthwhile things. Um, and so um, after that, after my second boot camp, um, I was on the fence and I and I waited. Um, and then at the very last minute, I'm like, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to do it. And, and so I, I jumped <laughs> and, um, best decision I've ever made in my life. And that is like, not, that is not an exaggeration, even in the slightest. Um, and I'm going to try not to get emotional or anything, but like my, my life is very different now. Um. I was a very sad person, a very, the thing is, is I've always seen myself as being somewhat of a positive person, like having a, you know, a positive outlook on life, but at the same time, maybe not really applying it in my own life. And so I had a lot of like negative self-talk. I would, I would just say horrible things to myself and most of the time not realize it. Um, and so realizing that I, I needed these, I needed these other things so that I was going to be able to move forward, uh, in my, in my decluttering journey. So 
initially, all I was thinking about was decluttering. But then when I got started and I realized, okay, well, it can't, I can't just declutter. I can't spend all of my time decluttering because my body won't let me do it. But, oh, hey, I have all of these other issues <laughs> that I need to deal with. <laughs> we hook you with the decluttering. <laughs> you know, because there's, because we, I was, de I needed to declutter the other parts of my life. So um, I, I have learned such a crazy amount of, of stuff from Clutter Boss Academy. Um, I, I, and I could talk about a few things, you know, maybe a little further into our interview about some of the things that have supported me the most. But um, I would just say kind of in the beginning of my progress, like I, I had a few wins under my belt, but I was, I would bounce around a lot. So I would, um, I couldn't stick with like one thing. So I would, you know, all within the same day, I might work on the kitchen and my bedroom and the bathroom. And then, <laughs> so it was just, I was everywhere. I was just a big mess, but I was motivated. So it was kind of <laughs> working, but kind of not. <laughs> um, big mess. I love that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so then I, uh, so then I started getting into my head a lot and I, and I started saying, okay, why am I doing this? Why, you know, why do I um, have all of this clutter? Why do I bounce around from thing to thing? Um, just so many whys started coming up in my head. And one of the biggest things that I learned from you, Jess, was set that aside for now. <laughs> Take the action, do the steps, get started. And those whys are going to start coming or the answers to the whys are going to just start coming to you. They're just going to start appearing. And that's exactly what happened because I will tell you that um, I would say at least 99% of the time, Jess is right. <laughs> so, Can we shout that from the mountaintops? I need the rest of my <laughs> yeah, do, do we need to bring your husband in? Um, <laughs> uh, but it's true. Like you're out, you're really good about um, posing things in a different way so that you can cut like sometimes I realize that I'm ridiculous just because you've asked me a question and then I'm like oh that was ridiculous okay I guess <laughs> I don't know why I was thinking that way um and, you know you lead you lead us through that in such a a nice way because you're so nice and wonderful but uh <laughs> you know some of that negative self-talk kind of comes back to you a little bit when you um when you you start uh unraveling some of these things really um it really all started to to change for me um and then towards the end of it was towards the end of the year I started getting really stressed out at work um I remember but, this so yeah <laughs> and I wasn't setting boundaries with my job and I was working just and especially with us being home working from home like I was so. working so many more hours and, and, um, and like my boss was like getting a hold of me and she's always kind of done that off of hours and stuff anyway, but it was, it was just even worse. Like my, I had no boundaries when it came to work. So, um, I was, I would, you know, get off work at five o'clock. I would be back on by seven. I might work till nine or 10. Like it, it was just, it wasn't good. And, um, I was getting things done, but at the end of the year, work gets really, really busy. And I was getting really stressed out and I didn't have those boundaries. And I think that's when people really noticed that I was, I was, uh, um, I don't even know how to put it. Like, I, I wouldn't say it was a depression, but it was definitely a lot of anxiety. And I was, and I was down, you know, I was definitely down. You were um, down. Yeah. I mean, I don't yeah. know what the word is, but it's almost, yeah. I mean, I, you almost like the way that you presented was almost like just hopeless. Like there's no answer, yeah. right? Like there's, yeah. there's no solution. Like we're home, like there's all of these things that are going on and I just can't see my way out of this. That's, I, that's what yeah. I would kind of, yeah. Yeah. That's it. That it actually explains it really well. That's exactly how I was feeling. Um, and then January came and again, I don't know what it is, beginning of a new year, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> let's, let's get this under control. Um, but the thing about Clutter Boss Academy is that 
Um, I can, even if I can't always be working on the clutter because of the, uh, the pain that I have, I can always be improving myself because, because we're working on all these different things in our lives. So that kind of clicked with me. Okay. You know, maybe you can't do as much as you want to do physically, but you can change things, um, for yourself, for your mindset, for your, um, health in general, like my eating and, and all of that. And so that's when I really plugged in and started utilizing uh, all of the different coaching opportunities. And, and um, we have like our nutrition coach and uh, just really digging into those opportunities and realizing that um, I could go that direction and I could have a ton of progress even if I didn't see some of the progress due to my physical problems. So, um, Healy, is it you woke up one day and like yeah. put everything together, like I it's know. like overnight. Like she just like, like actually somebody in the comments is saying, uh, and I don't know who it is because it just says Facebook user, but it says, I was worried about Keely. Her affect was flat. And then what it's, and that's, that was true. Like in that, the end of the year, yeah. it's just like that hopeless flat. But then one day, <laughs> I swear your voice was different. <laughs> you know what? And that day everybody commented on it and I knew it was a thing. Like I was like, what are you talking about? I haven't, I, I, you know, I didn't know what, I didn't realize it, I guess. I mean, I knew I felt better, but I didn't know I sounded different. And like everybody commented on it. And I was like, oh my gosh, wow which was just more encouragement. I mean, that the support that I get from the group is amazing. Um, you know, they, they help you through the hard times and they encourage you when things are going great too. Like they say, Hey, good job. Yeah. Um, and, and I need that. And I, and that's actually a motivation for me, like, um, which I also learned in the group, what my motivations are. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> Like what I, I'm a questioner. I learned recently that I'm a questioner. And so I was always wondering like why I was asking all of, all of these kind of simple questions, I guess, that I was like, these aren't really complex questions that I'm asking, but I'm asking questions constantly. And somebody has got to be getting annoyed with me was what I was thinking. Um, we don't get annoyed very easily. No, no, and no. I mean, no, of course not. That was just me. You know? <laughs> I know. I'm just like people always say, like, oh, like another, like another message for me. I'm like, uh, you have a question. Like, of course, there's yeah. a message. <laughs> but I learned that that's actually where my motivation comes from. That I don't because we've got we've got an accountability coach, which I think is absolutely wonderful. Um, but I found out that that's not what works for me. I am, I am internally motivated. Um, and, and I don't love how that sounds, but at the same time, at least I know what will motivate me now. And that's, you know, finding out all the information and deciding for myself that I need to do these things. And so like, for instance, um, uh, like drinking water, simple thing. Um, I, I, I don't like water very much. I don't think it tastes very good. Everybody's like, water doesn't have taste. What are you talking about? But I say it does. <laughs> so, uh, so I uh, I wasn't drinking very much water at all. <laughs> and actually, oh my God, was like, oh, so much. Uh, oh, like, oh my gosh. <laughs> um, yeah, I drink about 130 ounces of water now every day. <laughs> Let's say that again. Keely went from drinking no water. That yeah, I'm pretty close to yeah. water. <laughs> Not overnight, yeah. but <laughs> no. no. And that's what I learned too, just from uh, I for me, like just being in the program for a, a just a short time wasn't gonna do it for me. Um, and maybe that works for some people, but for me, I start. Uh, well, I do a lot of listening, first of all. It takes me a little bit to get on board with certain things. Um, and so I'll hear it over and over again. And then finally, I'll be like, oh, yeah, that does make sense to me. I need to do it. But I I get excited and I want to do everything. But I know for me, I have to add, uh, I have to add things slowly. So like I started working on my mindset and I started working on 
uh, my health, everything after the uh, beginning of the year, uh, we had been talking about, I know we talked about um, what we call the miracle mornings. I know we talked about that probably six months, nine months, something ago. I mean, it was probably yeah, yeah, like late summer. I think we did like okay. a lot of miracle yeah. mornings. Just, yeah. Just, you know, and then like nobody ever followed through with them. No. Like, not that, that it was just like you know tr this, these are things you could incorporate that might work that have worked for me in the past and then that was great it was a nice lesson and then yeah all of a sudden, six months later <laughs> right all of a sudden I'm like okay I'm gonna try that miracle morning thing because I will tell you and I think you know this Jess but um around that time like I and most of that ever like in the last year most of that year I had been um, struggling to get out of bed in the morning. So 8.30, I'm supposed to start work. And at 8.30, like probably literally 8.25, I would roll myself out of the bed <laughs> and kind of quickly move to the computer before anyone noticed <laughs> that it was 8.35. So... <laughs> Um, so, and then, and then, you know, and then I'm just groggy and I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm starting another day. And I just, I was not excited about starting another day. I did not look forward to it. Um, and then I started really paying attention and listening about this whole miracle morning idea. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, you know what, let's give it a try. We'll, we'll see. I'd like to get up earlier, you know, um, <laughs> And I started incorporating little pieces of it and realizing that I loved it so much that now I'm a Miracle Morning fanatic. <laughs> um, <laughs> my alarm goes off at five o'clock in the morning. And the thing that I like about you in, and anybody who's like, oh, my gosh, there's no way in the world I would want to get up at five o'clock in the morning. Um, here, this is the thing. I do my Miracle Morning really slowly. So I never feel rushed during my doing my miracle morning because I'm just kind of I don't know I don't know if I have a, another term to use but I'm kind of piddling around in the morning but with purpose I'm kind of piddling with purpose, <laughs> piddling with purpose. <laughs> <laughs> right so I I have specific things so I get up early and then um and then like I do. That's when I like to do my Bible reading. I start that first thing in the morning and then I do prayer time. And so they're, they're quiet, nice activities that I'm starting first thing in the morning. Um, I try to get some sunshine, get that going. Um, and then I have positive affirmations that I run through every morning. Some of my routines are kind of, uh, kind of funny. Uh, they're definitely like, I'm quirky. I know that I'm quirky. <laughs> it's just how I am. And, um, so one of my, one of my morning activities, every morning I have a, the same motivational video that I watch every morning and people are like, you watch the same one every day. And I do. That's not <laughs> You're motivated by it. <laughs> well, I, I am, I'm totally motivated by it. And then, um, but then after that, um, I listened to the theme song from Rocky. <laughs> every morning every morning and I get super it's pumped up by it, <laughs> it yeah it's it's funny and my son my son will be like why do you do this every morning <laughs> can't you listen to something else I'm like no I love it and I'm pumped I said don't you see how happy I am and he's like yeah you're you're happy you're you know and everybody would just say that now that I am a, I am a morning person. Like when I start work at eight 30, I have done so much before I start at eight 30. I've already put in a load of laundry or a load of dishes. I've, you know, taken care of the dog. I've, but I've done all of it slowly and calmly. So I'm not like jumping up out of bed, running around really quick, being all stressed out and then hurrying to get on at work. And then I have a bad attitude for the rest of the day. That's not me anymore. I get up in the morning and I'm like, yay, a new day. And I mean, I, and I know it's a little bit obnoxious, but I love it. And, and um, I, it. I mean, that's like own it. Right. And that's I love that you own it because it makes you 
it makes your voice sound different. Yeah. <laughs> it actually like changes every aspect of you. Yeah, I do. I do feel. I can feel it. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, so, but I realized too. Then, um, so I got the whole idea of the Miracle Morning from you know lessons from you, and then working with uh, Meredith, she started talking about like bedtime routines and what we should be doing for bedtime to set us up for a good morning. And I'm like, well, those go perfectly together. It makes sense to me. I questioned it. I reasoned it out. And I was like, it makes sense. I'm doing it. So then I, uh, then I started putting that into my routine. So I like dim my lights about two hours, hour and a half to two hours before bedtime. I start dimming lights around the house. And then uh, the electronics go off at least an hour before bedtime. And I just start doing quiet activities. Uh, and, and again, it might be some more, um, it might be more reading, Bible reading. It might be just reading a regular book. Um, but it's all just quiet, calm activities as my body is just starting to come down. And it works so well for me. Um, I When I go to bed, I'm tired. and I, you know, I think my, probably my melatonin has kicked in and like done all of the things that, that it's supposed to do. Um, and, and then that's what gives me the energy then so I can do my miracle morning. So they go together really nicely. Um, and I won't give up either of them. Are you still calling it blissful bedtimes? Yeah, those are my blissful bedtimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually I was gonna, I didn't know. I, so I had like, I was gonna, oh, I don't know how to do that. Um, this is my habit tracker. Oh, I love that. You probably can't actually see it that well, but you um, there's a there's a spot up here. This is my miracle morning at the top, and then down here is my blissful bedtime. So I've got um, you know several things that I track on here, um, which I also track in uh, Marie's tracker that she does on the group. Um, <laughs> but they, I love to check boxes. I know that about myself now too. So. <laughs> I mean, so much of what we teach, though, is just learning who you are and yeah. what, and also knowing that, like, you might, this might work for you right now, but it might not work like a month from now. And then that's okay. We'll just figure it out then. Keely, the yeah. thing that, like, I really want to impress upon our audience of listeners here, and you're getting all these funny comments, you definitely have to go back and, and, uh, <laughs> you were so invested in the old Keely when I first met you mm -hmm. and the person who was creating like tests with clutter for other people and who didn't drink water and who didn't get up early and who nothing could change. Like basically like there's no way to change any of this. And the key and that like so much of our clutter is connected to our identity, right? And these stories that we continually tell ourselves I mean, you've already talked so much about this, but is there, do you have any more comments about just like that identity shift? Because this Keely, I just wish that I could have like a side by side of old Keely and new Keely because it's so incredible. It's a dramatic yeah. transformation. I, and I feel it and it, and it like truly makes me joyful. Like I, we talked um, a long time ago. I, I don't know that I, I can't remember, you know, when things happened, but uh you know, one of the things that you talked about was uh, like feeling joy in like, how will you feel when your house is uh, like cleaned and somebody comes over, right? Like you were supposed to, we were supposed to think of like, how will you feel in that moment? And I told you, I don't know how to feel happy. Like I, I remember this. I remember this. And it was so upsetting to me. I was like, I don't know how to feel joy. I don't know how to feel happiness really. Like I have ha happy moments, but true, like, like feeling that I, I couldn't express that at that time. And now I can, I absolutely can, because I started looking at my priorities. I started looking at, uh, you know, some of those, um, not boundaries exactly, but um, what do they call it when you, uh, when you're a limit, limited Limiting beliefs. Oh, self-limiting beliefs. Yeah. 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 I had so many of those. Um, a lot of them came out of my marriage. Just um, a lot of you can't do this. You're bad at that. You um, I was just so, so down and out about myself. Um, 
And now I'm doing things like some things that I get excited that I can do now are like to some people are like not a big deal, but to <laughs> me, I don't care. I celebrate it and I love it. So like one of the first things was that I was like, I, I cooked um, salmon. <laughs> okay. And so like to everybody else, they're like, oh, wow, big deal. You cooked salmon. That was a big deal to me. It was a big skin, deal. <laughs> yes. That skin freaks me out. And so I was like, but you know what? You can do it. Now, before I was like, I can't do that. I can't do that. There's a lot of things I can't do. Now I don't feel that way. There are more things than not I, I know I can do. Um, and so like I just, so one of the big things um, that just recently happened, uh, like my, I had uh, helped my, my ex uh, with painting a room uh, 20, 25 years ago. I mean, it has been a long time ago. And he pretty much told me that I did a horrible job. Please leave. Don't paint anything ever again. It was pretty <laughs> much his like, and, and I took that really hard. Like some people would be like, who cares what you, th you know, what you think about it, whatever. But I took that personal, like to me, that was hurtful and painful. And I was like, okay, I can't do that. Um, the same thing about like having a garden, like it was the same thing. He, he would tell me that, you know, you can't take care of a garden. There's no way. And, and I believed that at that time. Um, but this last weekend, um, I, I painted for the first time in 20, 25 years. And you did an amazing job. <laughs> you know what? I thought it was going to be, I thought it was going to be horrible. I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to take everything out of me. Uh, <laughs> like I just went into it with like, okay, I know I can do this. It's going to be hard, but you can do it. And I got in there and started doing it. I'm like, this isn't hard. This is, this is fun. What is, what is the world? I think that you're going to start painting every room in your house now. <laughs> oh yeah. I, can paint, I, I totally, I can paint anything. Like, and, and like with the, um, like gardening and, and like plants, like I didn't think I could keep a plant alive. And now I have like 50 plants. Now you're like crazy plant lady. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm the crazy plant lady now. Actually, I was wearing a sweatshirt that said um, crazy plant lady. I, I um, have this sweatshirt on. And when I went into a, um, into a store that sells like plants and that kind of thing. And a lady, lady came up to me and she's like, I love your sweatshirt. Can you help me? And then she just like. <laughs> I'm like, well, I don't work here. She's like, that's okay. She says, like, if you wear a sweatshirt like that, you must know stuff. So. <laughs> You're an assumed expert. It's because you carry yeah. yourself with such poise now, and your voice yeah. sounds so confident. And then you wear labels like right, <laughs> right, exactly. So I'm, I'm just learning that there's all of these things that I can do, and that I have, uh, you know, new interests and things. Um, one thing I don't think TV is a bad thing. So. By me saying what I'm saying, it's not like I'm downing watching television or anything because I have a few shows that I like to watch. But I used to watch a lot of television and I don't watch hardly any anymore because I'm doing all of these other things that make me feel really good. And I don't miss that. I don't miss sitting on a couch and watching TV. Uh, I miss like if I don't get the time to sit and relax and read my book at the end of the night. Um, those are the things that mean the most to me now. And, and I, I, now I have this time to explore that and uh, figure out what my priorities really are. Uh, and I wasn't doing that before. And a lot of the times my priorities were other people. They weren't very, very often it wasn't about me, which, I, you know, I do believe that. I believe we need to, you know, be there for other people and, and all of that. But really, I more had this kind of codependent personality that um, wasn't good. It, literally, like my feelings were based on how, you know, someone else felt a lot of the time. And I just, I wasn't in, in touch with, with myself at all. And then all of a sudden, like I said, like I was in CBA for nine months or whatever. And then all of a sudden it was like, Oh, click, 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 click. <laughs> like, <laughs> everything just kind of, it all came together. And I was, and I was like, oh my gosh. And, and it is, it is like a, it is a true joy 
for me uh, to know that I can do these things and and it's okay if it's taking me you know a little bit longer and that I'm you know I I got to get my back taken care of but I know now I can do it so that hopeless person that you know sounded so deflated <laughs> um, I know I can do it I've got you know I've got to get this this issue taken care of with my back but once I do I'm unstoppable um that's that's my word for next year I unstoppable is my word for next year but um and then so and um so my word for this year is choices and I will tell you the whole mindset around that is is just it's huge too because everything comes down to a choice that we make um and one of the things that for me, I was always like, well, I don't feel like doing that today. I don't, you know, I don't feel like doing some decluttering. I don't feel, and then all of a sudden I realized, who cares? <laughs> who cares if you don't feel like doing it? <laughs> like, th that's, that's totally irrelevant. Um, I remember the day you told me, you're like, I'm putting my feelings aside because I, yeah. I don't care. I have to actually do something. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, yeah. And, and I didn't know that. I mean, it sounds crazy, but um, at the same time, it was just, I don't know. It, it, all of these things came together to help me to start seeing things differently. I started paying attention to the negative self talk and identifying it and saying, okay, when I, like, so I might say something that's um, a little bit silly or something. And I would literally like think in my head, you're an idiot. Like I would Im immediately say that in my head. But it's so ridiculous to me. But I mean, it's ridiculous that you would think that about yourself from my perspective. But I totally get like we all do yeah. that. Right. We all have this 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 horrible, like just constant dialogue that is of our own making and un like right. when you say to somebody else they're like what are you talking about like that was funny and hilarious like <laughs> yeah right exactly and they weren't big they weren't a big deal and i didn't even know i was doing it until i started paying attention to it until i realized that i needed to start listening for those things and that kind of you know that kind of came out of um some of our uh psychotherapy time and and that too so that's been huge <laughs> for me. Like um, I've learned so I've seriously, I've learned so much about myself, but now I recognize that uh, negative self-talk and I don't do it very much anymore. And if I do, I immediately challenge it. So I immediately say, <clears throat> you are not an idiot. That Why would you even think that for a second? That is, that's not true. And so I'll recognize it. I'll hear it and I'll change it. And those are things I didn't know to do before. I want to have the Rocky soundtrack going right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to watch this later. I'm going to be like, oh my goodness. <laughs> this is just, it's so, it's so inspiring to, to like, to sit with you and to hear the whole entire thing, like put together from your perspective. It, it, it's just, it's blowing me away. And in the comments, oh my gosh, it's blowing everyone else away in the comments also. So um, <laughs> Facebook will mute you if you put that soundtrack on. Oh. <laughs> Wonka says, sing it, Keely. If you guys in the comments have questions, like specific questions for Keely, put them in there so that we can ask her. But Keely, what would you say, I think so everything that you described, the, the place that you were in in your life when you started boot camp and then joined CBA, I believe it's familiar to a lot of people, right? Just the, this like, this hole that we get ourselves into and it's like, how the hell am I gonna get myself out of this, right? So do you have any advice for somebody who's in that spot right now? Like, where do you start? Like, what's been like a key element that's been really critical for you? Well, like I said, like I add one thing at a time, first of all, because I have a tendency to get overwhelmed very easily. So um, first of all, as, and again, it goes back to choices. So I made a choice that I was going to do this and that I'm not gonna allow myself um, excuses because I was an excuse maker as well. Um, and the excuses sounded okay to me. They didn't sound like they were, 
like ridiculous excuses, but I was making a choice. I was making a choice, you know, not to do certain things that I needed to do. Um, and so making the decision that I was going to do it and then working really kind of on one thing at a time and then just adding in little, little, you know, things that, um, at different times. That's how I had to do it. I couldn't, I get excited about a hundred things, but I know I can't do a hundred things. <laughs> so, yeah, I can really um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cause I do, I get very enthusiastic and excited and I want to start something new, but, um, I know that I don't work well like that. Um, and so, um, like timers were a big deal for me. I know we talked about that a lot in the beginning because I would get super overwhelmed because I would think I need to get this whole room done in one day, which the whole, some of these rooms took me a month and I thought I was going to do it in a day. Uh, <laughs> so it's like, and my expectations were a little off, but, um, but the we do a lot of expectation management in Clutter Boss Academy too. Yeah. Like, like just let's be realistic about this. Yes, I know you would. You talked to me down a lot, and the other coaches too. Like they were like, mm. <laughs> let's be a little more realistic about this. And and so we came up with you know the plan of using timers instead. So I would, and because I was hurting myself, like I would get excited and I'd hurt myself because I would overdo it, um, and then I'd be down for several days. So instead, we'd say, okay, let's set a timer for fifteen minutes work for 15 minutes, take a break, see if your body feels like it's ready to get up and do some more. If it is, then we're going to do another 15 minutes. And if not, then we're, we did something today and we're going to try again tomorrow. And that made a ton of difference because, you know, when, if I would hurt myself again and be down for several days, then I would be disappointed. But I also learned that when I did hurt myself, there was other things I could work on that were making me better. Um, and even it, some of it was still decluttering. So like I, I had some uh, pretty major win fairly early on with my paperwork because I could only declutter physical stuff um, for short periods, but I could sit down then for a break and have a pile of paperwork in front of me and I could go through that. Um, so just, you know, talking to the, talking to the group, getting suggestions, uh, it's just, it's been so invaluable. And I don't always think of the obvious answer. I don't know <laughs> what it is, but um, sometimes, like, sometimes I have some serious ahas and I'm like, but that was such a simple answer. <laughs> <laughs> I find the biggest aha moments in life are from the most simple things. Like yeah. that. Yeah. If you basically look at everything that I've put together here, it's really simple, but like really <laughs> impactful, like stop the flow in if you're increasing the flow out. Like that's like a very simple concept. And brilliant. Yeah, you're right. It is a simple, but brilliant. Like, um, and you also had said like, um, because I was like trying to fill my boxes and you were like, you can donate boxes that aren't completely full. And I was like, what? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was a foreign concept for sure. And then the dishwasher, are you kidding me? We can run the dishwasher when it's not full? Like, yeah. not a clue. I had no, no clue. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's hilarious. All right, Keely, we got some questions in here. Rachel is wondering, how have you seen your health change? Oh, huge huge, huge difference in my health. Um, wow. Um, I, I have so much more energy. Like I said, I'm drinking water all the time. I, um, I gave up, I gave up pop to switch to the water. Um, and so really, you know, I have this, this lingering back problem, but everything else about me feels really good. Um, my, my numbers are really good. I just, um, you know, they just check my blood pressure and stuff. My blood pressure is great. My pulse is great. Um, really everything about me, um, health wise has, I mean, I just don't have it. I don't have any issues except for, I just have this kind of abnormality in my back, which is <laughs> unfortunate, but, um, but the, here's the thing I will tell you too, um, about me getting that x-ray today. And I was telling Jess about this, but I had a bad experience. Um, a couple years ago, 
where I had gone in to, to get my back looked at. And um, they did a procedure that I kind of, I woke up in the middle of it and I, and I was aware of what was going on and it was pretty awful. Um, and then I was scared. I didn't, it didn't really help. What I had done didn't help very much. It helped a little, but mostly I was still self-managing my pain. Um, but I was scared to go back. Um, and then I've really been focusing on my health and I want to get, um, a, I have a lot of weight that I want to get off. Um, and there's, my diet is really good. Um, and there's only so much that I can keep improving. Like there is some, you know, I keep looking at things and seeing, you know, what else I can improve. Meredith gives me suggestions and things. Um, but there's not a lot more I can do in that area to really lose the weight. I've got to get active. And so um, just that motivation for me now and the way that I feel about myself and what's important, I, I said, you know what, I, I've got to be able to do this activity. It's important to me and I'm going to empower myself to do it. And so I, um, I called the pain clinic that I had been to um, previously, the two years ago, and I said, can you tell me who that doctor was that did my procedure? Because I don't want to have that person again. It's not something I would have done before. I would have just let them do whatever. Um, and they were like, well, usually we like to have the same doctor. And I said, absolutely not. I'm not I said, there's probably nothing wrong with that doctor, but I'm not going to be able to go into that procedure with that doctor without just being a mess. So I know what I need, and I'm going to put that boundary out there like that's not something I would have done before um so it, yeah it's it, it's really good um it's, it's and, huge. and my priorities because my priorities have changed and health is a big priority for me now it's really high up in my list now um I'm taking that step even though I was uh, even though I'm fearful of doing the procedure again uh I can get past that because I I've got that motivation and I've got, and I know what my priorities are and my priorities are to get my back in alignment so that I can start um, continuing to do the decluttering for one. It is very, um, it, it really impacts my ability to be able to do as much as I would like to do. I'm still decluttering, but it, you know, it takes a lot of time for me, but also um, I have to get active if I want to have, um, if I want to have the life that I want to have. And that's important to me now too. I'm not going to settle. I'm, I'm just not going to settle for less of a life. Anymore. Oh my so, gosh. I have goosebumps, Keely. <laughs> so yeah, it's, I, it, it's, it's turned around like everything, every area of my life has turned around since CBA. And I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not puffing it up. Like it really, it, it means so much to me. And and something I haven't even talked about are the friendships and the support that I get in the group. Like, these are my people. That's just all there is to it. Like, I, I love these people. Like, they are my family. And they are. They're my CPA family. So. Um, I feel the same exact way. It's yeah. an absolutely incredible group of people. Yeah. It's I feel like they, I feel like this has saved my life, really. I mean, I would have still been just barely hanging on. So thank you, Jeff. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love you too, Keely. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you because you did the hardest thing, which was take that first step and say, I'm going to do this and I need help. And I think that that like, we really underestimate how scary that is. And you know, it'll, I do like all this ridiculous reflection constant. I'm constantly reflecting. I'm like an over reflector, but one of my reflections lately has been, you know, I approach things through the idea that you're dealing with your clutter because I think one reason that works is because it's so scary to think about dealing with the other stuff. So if I went out and said, you know, into the world and was like, okay, we're going to deal with like the reasons that you have clutter. Like, why are you building these walls? Why are you, you know, it's too much. It's, it's too hard to start there. So we have to start someplace that's very tangible. And I think that that's like, this interview is really, it's it's really emphasizing to me that that's, that's like a good place to start. <laughs> it's a good starting point, right. For like moving. Yeah. Into that. yeah, you're right. Because it wasn't, um, 
it wasn't hard for me to do those first steps. Like it was, it was fun. And like I said, I liked doing the men's game. That was fun. I was going around and, and, you know, making a game out of something that I needed to do. But then everything else started to, you know, unravel around that. And, and it, every area of my life, literally every area. <laughs> I it's can't like think of You can't help but hear the other stuff, whether you're there for it or not. You can't help but hear it or read it or see it. Like it just can't help. <laughs> yeah. Um, Anka's wondering what was the first step you did to start your miracle mornings? Um, so the very first thing was, um, I started doing my, I started doing my, um, after, well, I guess the miracle mornings, like I'm trying to remember like where I started because I started adding extra things. So I think like the laundry and the dishes, like I think that kind of came later. It was more so the just, just waking it up, waking up kind of quietly and calmly getting the lights turned on, getting some sunshine, like. Um, just starting my day sooner made a big difference. And you don't have to get up at five o'clock. Like, like uh, you know, Jess's whole lesson and stuff about that is not necessarily what my miracle morning is. So it's, it's something that you kind of have to adapt to yourself, which a lot of, you know, what CBA is, is adapting it to what works good for you. So um, find a strategy and we're going to make it work for you. Like there's no yeah. right way to do something. There's a million ways to do it. So how can we make this work for you? Yeah. Like a lot of people do like uh, meditation. I don't really do meditation myself, but I consider kind of that prayer time and, and reading the Bible and that I consider that kind of my, um, my meditation time. So, um, you know, there's, there's lots of different ways to do it. And, uh, but I, what I noticed is that I, I feel like I've accomplished something before I've started work and that makes me feel really good. So I don't think it necessarily matters what you're doing because, you know, if you're kind of getting, kind of getting up and, and around and feeling positive and, and calmly starting your day. And if you accomplish anything before, you know, before work starts or, you know, before your day gets going, it feels good. So I don't know that it matters. Like, um, morning is an accomplishment. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. that is an accomplishment in and of itself. Like having a morning where you are not like drained <laughs> by the time you start work is a huge accomplishment. That's exactly right. It is exactly right. And one, one other big um, like mindset shift that I had um, was that, and this has actually been really huge for me. Um, so I would always, whenever I'd have a problem or something would come up, I would be like, oh, poor me. Like, I was the worst about that. I would be like, oh, something else. There's always something happening to me. Um, Victim mindset. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It was awful. And then finally, I realized, um, and I saw a quote somewhere, and that, like, that sticks in my head when I'm thinking about it. But uh, the quote I think was uh, the biggest problem that we have is thinking that we shouldn't have problems. And so when I have a problem now, I immediately think I'm supposed to have a problem. What's my problem for today? <laughs> and like, I go into it with like an oddly like happy mindset about <laughs> I'm going to be dealing with a problem today. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you're so like new keely now <laughs> yes yeah like it's just everything has been affected like it like so there's no i don't feel like there's any part of my life that hasn't been touched by cba I, I i really can't think of anything that hasn't <laughs> so if there's somebody listening who's on the fence about joining clutter boss academy what would you i mean you've already said an awful lot but do you have <laughs> any final words for um, the Fencers. <laughs> yeah, well, if you're, gosh, if you're on the fence, um, gosh, that's, that's so hard. You just shouldn't be. You shouldn't. It, it, <laughs> if you're not getting my message, I don't understand. I don't understand. But um, <laughs> I feel the same way. <laughs> yeah, like I, but I, you know what the thing is too is I didn't even know what I needed when I started. I knew I needed something, and I knew I needed more but I didn't know what I needed. And it was over time that I discovered what I needed and, and then it finally all came together. So 
Um, I think that's the big thing. You, if you feel like you need something, I need more. Even if you don't know what exactly that is, this group, it, it's going to hit on it. Like, I just know that it is. And well, that's like the whole approach is that it's fully integrated, which means that we cover everything because you could be, you could need like whatever you need, it's there. Like that's like, that, that's like a fully integrated approach. Right. So like, and if you, and if it's not there, we're going to bring it there <laughs> like, we're gonna that is, it or make it. <laughs> that was absolutely true. Like there have been times where I've been like, um, Jess, I'm interested in this, or I'd like to learn more about that. And you create it. Like you're like, not, not a problem. I, I'll make the time for that. So you don't have to. Or and if I it, don't know what, like, I also like, I'll just find somebody who knows yeah. the expert, right? Like, I mean, I definitely don't know everything. Um, somebody is asking, what does it cost to join CBA? So CBA is for 12 months. It's a year long program. At first it was 12 weeks, then it was six months. Now it's a year um, because that really is what we're learning, um, how long it takes to have all of this stuff kind of come together. And it's $3,600 for the year. I'm more than happy to work with you and make a payment plan that works for you. Um, so if you have any any inkling that you want to do it and you just need a payment plan or we, we'll figure it out, just message me. So... <laughs> Yeah. <sighs> I you know what, just I would say, can I say something about that yeah, too? Yeah, yeah. Um I like I said, like it was a I felt like it was a big, you know, money commitment when I was trying to make that decision. I have never looked back and thought even for a second that it wasn't worth every penny of it. And also, like I said, I started saving so much, like right out the gates that like it wasn't much time. Like if I was say, well, I don't know if my math skills, if I can get that together yeah. quick enough, but that probably was just a few months worth of the stuff that I was buying anyway to bring into my house. It was three so, months for you, Keely. Yeah. <laughs> I did the math. <laughs> it was two and a half to three months. <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> it is. So I, for me to like put a program out there and just like what, you know, it took me a really long time to, this has been in my head like that I want to do this for so long. It took me a really long time to actually start this because I feel like when you do internet sales and marketing, it is like the most disgusting, vile atmosphere. And people will sell you absolutely anything. And then there's no like, first of all, you don't know if they're credentialed. You don't know. There's no like follow up. There's and I didn't want to be a part of that, but I also really badly wanted to put this together. So the only way that I could make this program happen for me to go to sleep at night was to make it where it was like beyond worth every penny. Um, and in this case also, because we're talking about stuff and clutter, you save so much money, like period, you just do. Like you, your investment pays for itself time and time and time and time again. So. Yeah, that's... absolutely. And even if it didn't, it, it's worth it. I I can't <laughs> say I can't say an, enough about that. Seriously, like it does sound, you know, it sounds like a chunk, but honestly, I've never given it a second thought. And I think that, like, especially as moms, we find it so easy to justify spending money for so many things that are just like so disposable and so meaningless in our life. And, you know, we'll, we'll go shopping because we need some, just some time away from the house. And then we end up, you know, buying stuff for our kids because they need it, which they don't, right. They might need some one or two things, but they don't need something every time you go to the store or we'll buy, you know, special groceries because we feel like it's healthy or whatever. There's so many ways that we just really spend money without giving it too much thought to justify some other thing. But this is an, and it's uncomfortable for us to invest in ourselves. That's not something that we're used to. So this is like a, this, you know, the idea of investing in yourself, I think is foreign to women in 2021. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Um, so we're at an hour now. This was Keely. <laughs> Do you guys have any 
last questions for Keely before we wrap up. This is going to be posted into our group so you can listen to the replay. Um, and I know that if you have questions for Keely, she will also be happy to answer them in the comments. Uh, Keely, this has been, I actually, as soon as we're done here, I need to send this to Meredith <laughs> to make sure she watches it. I need to send it to Megan to make sure she watches it. The oh. other coaches in CBA because it's just, I mean, it's, it's so validating to have you talk about this whole transformation that you've been through. And it's so inspiring for so many people. And I just really feel like everyone can relate to where you were in the beginning and where you are now is mind blowing and amazing. And we need the Rocky soundtrack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and the resource, like I said, the resources are invaluable. I, you get, You'll get stuff no matter what. You'll get stuff out of the program if you do almost nothing. But if you, <laughs> but if you put forth some some effort, like it's not like I'm some big huge like. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't even know what to say. Like I, I don't like do tons and tons and tons of things and and all of that. I'm just your average person. Um, but if you put in some effort, it it goes a hundred times. It, it really does. Thank you so much. It, you, Sam says that she's feeling very strong now. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Keely, you're amazing. Thank you for showing up. I am so happy that you can feel joy now. This is like, I feel like mission accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Really big deal. And it's just been, it's been incredible working with you and talking with you. And I can't wait to see what the future holds because this is just the beginning. So. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I agree. If I get nothing, if I got nothing else, I would be happy, but I'm, I'm on a journey and I'm going to continue. So That's thank right. you so much. <laughs> You're so welcome. Thank you, Keely. Have a great night, everyone. <laughs> Bye everybody. Bye. <laughs>